I present to you the brand. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it like a fucking movie commentator. I have created a brand new series for the YouTube Potters. that I am going to be streaming. Basically, I was thinking I need a way to make short form content that's like around 10 minutes long is educational and interesting and also entertaining. And I need to be able to do all of this in somewhat short periods of time because if you guys don't know, I'm in school, I play volleyball multiple times a week, I have a girlfriend who I talk to frequently, and I have lots of other things going on. So I needed to come up with some kind of short form but like highly entertaining content that I could do fairly often. And uh, something that people ask me about a lot uh, is extinct fish. Very commonly I get asked about extinct fish. Like what my opinions are on like certain fish like say Dunkleosteus or like other extinct interesting fish or like old coelacanth like relatives and all that. And I've never really known a ton about or about uh, extinct fish. So I figured it would be a good learning opportunity for me and also a good way to have educational content and entertaining content for chat to talk about some of the craziest extinct fish in existence. And of course today we are going to start with the placoderms, which is a huge class of extinct fish. Pretty awesome. A lot of people's like favorite extinct fish because they're very well known for a certain member of their uh, class, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that soon. First of all, the name, what placoderm means, it's Greek, both ends. Placo means plate. Derma means skin, like a dermatologist. Placo just makes sense. Uh, this is one of the fossils from a placoderm. This is the lower plate uh, of a jaw. You can see how like plated and hard and basically they're armored fish. Uh, that's the idea. This is an interesting adaptation because when people think placoderms, I think oftentimes they think just like Dunkleosteus type thing. They think like uh, armored fish, big, big jaw, teeth, all that, right? Placoderms are completely extinct. There are no members of this class that still exist. Uh, so this is an interesting one that I want to present, the Brinda Bella Spis Stensioi. There's no shot I said that first correctly first try, but the beautiful thing about Latin is that everyone who speaks it natively is dead. So I can say that however the hell I want, and as long as it's kind of generally Germanic, it's fine. So, let's begin. Basically, the way that this is going to work is I'm going to take you through all of the different members and the interesting parts of the class Placoderms. Uh, so basically, by the end of this, you will know everything there is to know uh, about all of the different Placoderms, and you might uh, also learn some specific stuff about some interesting fish. So first of all, we'll start with the members. Let's learn about them. First of all, we have the Antiarchy, and that means opposite anus. And it's this little fucker right here. Very interesting looking. Kind of looks like a horseshoe crab with fins. Little weird. It's called the opposite anus because the guy, the scientific who, uh, the scientist who is discovering it, thought that the anus was on the same side of the body as the oral cavity. So basically, he thought that the mouth and the anus were next to each other, but they're not. Uh, that was just a, a you know a misnomer. And uh, once they realized that the it's not true, you know, it has a, a normally placed anus and a normally placed mouth. They never corrected it. So uh, it's still the antiarchy to this day. It's the opposite anus. And then we have the Arthodira. The Arthodira means jointed neck. And uh, this guy might look a little bit familiar because this is contains the family that uh, everyone's favorite fish that Chad is being spammed with is made. It is not a Dunkleosteus, this picture, but Arthrodira contains Dunkleosteus, which brings us to our crazy ass fish of the day. Everyone knew what it was going to be. It's the Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus is this fucking massive, large jawed, huge fish that is just like the center of so much attention when it comes to extinct fish. It's like most people's favorite extinct fish because it's big, it's powerful. It's got like the cool teeth and the fossils look sick. This like fossil right here looks exactly like the one I would collect in Animal Crossing. When I played Animal Crossing, you could dig for fossils and one of the ones, there are like hundreds of fossils you could get, but one of the ones you could get was a Dunkleosteus head that looked basically exactly like this and I collected them. I would just go in, I would dig out the fossil, get all of them checked to see if any of them were Dunkleosteus and then I would like turn off my switch put it to the next day, collect all the fossils, and do that over and over again for hours just to collect as many of them as I could. 
uh, some interesting things about the crazy ass fish of the day. The most well known one is the Dunkleosteus Torelli. That's the the giant one. Could get up to basically 29 feet long, which is absolutely insane. Weigh four tons. And had a bite force of 7,400 newtons. So newtons of force, basically the equivalent of a black rhinoceros sitting on you. But not only is the black rhinoceros sitting on you, but imagine the black rhinoceros has these teeth, this like bony plated teeth. So uh, just absolutely insane and decimating bite force. Pretty sick. All right, some of the rest of the members in the placoderms we're gonna go through. There's the Brindabella Speeda. I, apparently Brindabellas are some mountains in Australia and they just named this like weird looking like lancet fish which has like a platypus like snout after the mountains in Australia. So the name actually has absolutely nothing to do with the, f if the fish, but that's what they called it. There's the Petalichthida. I couldn't figure out what petal means as a root. Um, it really it only exists in this fossil. I couldn't really find recreations of it So I'm just gonna go with petal fish because that's what some of the translators told me But I could not come up with what that means I'm sure maybe someone in the YouTube comments or maybe even in twitch chat will know what petal ichthy means I know ichthy is fish because ichthyology They're small and they're flat So I consider them the runts of the litter of the the class of placoderms. These are basically the uh, the runts of the litter They're small. They're flat they're more like uh, flounders than any of these cool guys. We've got the Philopeda, which is just looks absolutely insane. This looks like something out of Japanese mythology. I've seen this drawing before and it's like, obviously, you know, drawings aren't necessarily created by scientists. Drawings are like recreations that like artists make of things and their intention is just to like recreate what they see in fossils using the features. So it's not like this is like perfectly accurate, but Still, it's super cool. Uh, they're also flattened, but they're ambush predators, uh, which is not uh, very common. And then they're freshwater, which among the placoderms is rare. Most of the, the placoderms were at least brackish, mostly saltwater. So this is the one of the uh, freshwater orders within the class of placoderms. All right, next up is the Tyctontidae. Tyctontidae. All right, well, I guess Tycto means folded because Dontida means feet teeth uh, so they had less armor than the other placoderms when you think placoderms you're mainly thinking about the armor you're thinking about like you know the big bony plates that exist on the outside of the fish because that's just like what they're commonly known for but these guys had a lot less armor uh, you can see sort of like where the armor is centralized in the head area and they looked like uh, modern day chimeras which if you don't know they're uh, elasmobranchs they're basically, well, they look basically exactly like this. A lot of placoderms are considered like prehistoric chimeras because they look a lot like chimeras. And uh, they are the only placoderm, I think, that are sexually dimorphic. Uh, if you don't know, sexual dimorphism means that the male and the female animal of the same species look differently. All right, we've got the Reni Renanita. Renanita. Oh, Renanita, the Rhine fish. I don't even really know what Rhine means, but that's what it's called. So the armor is made out of unfused scales. So people consider this like an ancestral order. Uh, this is considered like an old, old placoderm. So when you talk about like the the class placoderm or any class in the cladistics and phylogenies, there's like an ancestral trait, something that all of the the species within it share, and that's what makes them you know somewhat related. Or it's ancestral trait. And this, the Rhine fish, have the most like defined or undefined, I guess, version of the ancestral trait. They basically have the ancestral trait. Uh, so they're considered an old ancestral order. Then we have the Acanthothoraceae, which is closely related to the placoderms above, but you can just see the drawings. Like, I love recreations of extinct fish. This drawing literally looks like a dragon. It's just so cool. Uh, so they're closely related to these guys. So they also are, you know, pretty ancestral and they're called spine chests and they have large spines coming from their chest. Surprise, surprise, they're called spine chests because they have large spines coming from their chest. But look at these drawings. I mean, obviously they probably didn't exist in this color or this like extravagant, but I mean, I just absolutely love it. And then we've got the maybe members. So these guys are listed technically, scientifically as members of the class of placoderms, but also it's not really sure if if these orders even exist and if they do exist It's not even known if they would fit into placoderms So they're just kind of here tentatively until we find more fossils because some of them are only known from one fossil 
Uh, so we've got the pseudo pedal theta. So basically, if you remember the, the pedal theta from earlier, this is a pseudo pedal theta. So it's a fake pedal fish, basically. It may not even be a real order. Uh, there's only been a couple of specimens found. And the reason that we, uh, we treat them differently is because they were uh, preserved in different ways. So like when fossils are made, when the animal is like crushed, it can be crushed like horizontally, vertically, all of that. Um, and so basically the few fossils that we have of pseudopetalictida are all preserved in different ways. So it's hard to tell if the difference is actually morphological differences in these fish or if the differences are in the way that the uh, the fish was preserved. So it may not even be a real order. These might just be petalichthetas that were preserved in a weird way. Who knows? So take it with a grain of salt. And then we've got Stencioella. I have no, don't even ask me what the hell Stencioella means. I tried, I don't know. I can't figure it out. It's the most mysterious pla placoderm. It's listed as the most enigmatic placoderm. It's only known from like a small slate in Germany. It might not even be a placoderm. Scientists think it might be a chimera. So that's why it's like tentatively in the placoderm family. Um, and there's basically nothing known from it. These guys are basically only known from a couple fossils. I drew all the other fish you'll go through have at least like a decent amount of fossils that you'll find. These guys, who fucking knows? And uh, yeah, that is all I have to say on placoderms. Whoa.